Sigma Tiger News! TGIF people, we got the Beast Wars today, and Elon is taking on the woke mind virus. Let's get it! <laughs> And it's Friday, people. The tiger is here. Let's get the news. What do we got? Well, this is a bit of old news, but Mr. Beast YouTube star Chris Tyson comes out as transgender. I am a woman. This was a year ago. So what's happened since then? Well, anyway, uh, say hello to Chris Tyson, the social media star best known for appearing on Mr. Beast's popular YouTube channel, has officially come out as transgender woman. Well, it yeah, previously went by Chris Tyson, proudly announced on Anthony Padilla's popular YouTube channel, which boasts more than 7.4 million subscribers, that she is a woman and going by pronoun she, her, she ecstatically made that announcement after Padilla noted that she showed up to the interview fully presenting as a woman. Because I am a woman, she, her, Tyson exclaimed. I've never said that publicly, but I've been fully confident in that decision for over a year now. Well... Perhaps she should have come out as a 12-year-old girl because news has come out and uh, guess what happened? Some interesting things. Uh, here's someone who worked for Mr. Beast. His name was Dawson. And from February to May this year, uh, they were employed. And what did they say? They heard many times that Ava, Chris Tyson, changed their name, is a major liability. Interesting. But they can't get rid of her because she's already threatened legal action and she knows too much. And when all this information comes out about everything that she knew, everything other people know, I promise you on everything, Mr. Beast is done. The Beast Wars. Amazon, if you can get your money back, get your money back. Well, yeah, Amazon signed a $100 million deal with Mr. Beast, so he'll show his programming on that channel or whatever it is, that platform. In another post, the man said they had provided proof of being employed by Mr. Beast to Reddit moderators. Yeah, he did like a an answer Q&A or something like that. Alright, however, Dawson provided no evidence to support his allegations of having worked there, whatever. Social media statements, I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments if I hurt or offended anyone. It was not my intent, she wrote on X, formerly Twitter. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health. Yeah, before Chris decided to transition, he was married with child. Anyway, Lava GS, who is now age 20, also spoke out against the grooming allegations in a post shared on X on Monday. Huh. These videos are massive lies, twisting the truth. Ava never did anything wrong and just made a few edgy jokes. Yeah, no big deal. I was never exploited or taken advantage of. This situation takes away from children who are actively being exploited every day online. I'm not a victim of anything being claimed in these videos at all. So yeah, a bunch of videos come in online saying that uh, Chris was grooming this person, Chris being 20, the person being 13. So let's dive right in. Here's an image of Chris, uh, or Ava, as they go by now. Uh, just a month ago, another channel, Prism, 2042, sorry, created a similar video titled Chris Talked Inappropriately to a 13-Year-Old where he goes over screenshots of Tyson allegedly talking to a then 13-year-old who goes by the screen name Lava GS. Lava GS allegedly added Tyson on Snapchat. The minor is now 20 years old at the time of writing this article as reported by Brion in his video. Prism has also noted that they communicated one-on-one -on -one and unattended. Okay, Tyson had come out as bisexual. Both Prism and Brion shared the numerous screenshots reportedly sent by Tyson to the minor, most of which were conversations held on Twitter and Discord. One disturbing and creepy snap from Tyson underneath an American flag while making a strange face with the caption, Coming for America. Yeah, with like a strange look on his face. Another shows an image of Lava GS asking Tyson to please stream again with the Mr. Beast co-host tweeting back, Thanks, Dad. You want to moderate it? Okay, whatever. But not $5, pathetic, just kidding. Check again, I posted some fire nudes for you. What? All right, so everyone's talking about this. It's whatever, so what's the deal? 
just disgusting things. It's not just edgy jokes, okay? It was too far. Too far. You shouldn't have communication. You shouldn't have a 13-year-old uh, with a thread of messages. There shouldn't be any conversation. And then there's the uh, there's this dude who uh, like does like dirty CP pictures. You know, child sexual nature art anonymously. And uh, this guy bought one of those paintings, Chris Tyson, Ava, whatever. Anyway, mm, a lolly, there it is. That creepy stuff. So they, it's basically like uh, CP for, they say it's a vampire, right? 400-year-old vampire in a kid's body with sexual urges. Yeah, there you go, gross. And people are reading that. Who? People like this guy, who came out as a woman, but really he identifies as like a 12-year-old girl, clearly. All right, <clears throat> Moving right along from that, Mr. Beast came out and fired him, apparently, and was like, I'm, yeah, he used to be my best friend, but uh, I had nothing to do with that crazy noise. Anyway, instant noodles, okay, good or bad, whatever, staple of Asian culture, well, this person, Barbara O'Neill, believes that they cause a bunch of problems. Well, let's have a look. Uh, they may be associated with cancer, obesity, fibroid, hypertension, stomach ulcer, kidney damage, thyroid imbalance, immune suppression, and menstrual irregularities. What? I mean, come on. Is this for real? Let's just see why she would believe such a thing. So I believe that's the seasoning. There's the dough for the noodle. Looks like uh, Play-Doh. Mm-mm. Boil and ready for your belly. Go ahead and get in on some of that. My God. Mm. I mean, I've had ramen before, and it's good. Like, you know, it's delicious and salty, but after watching that, it makes me want to vomit. All right, uh, this is the whole problem. Every decision that is made to validate the delusions of these men, and they justify it by saying it's on the basis of inclusion. What they don't mention is the moment a man is included in a woman's sport, a woman is excluded. That's the basic numbers, okay, people? That's exactly what's going on here. All right. If you want to include a trans woman, then you're excluding a natural woman. All right? That's how it works. This guy here goes on to talk about it, but whatever. And here's the reason. This is the evidence, okay? Teams with trans-identified male cyclists win top three spots at a woman's bike race in Washington. Let's get a round of applause for those strong trans women. Just capturing the top spot, top three spots, that is, in the race. Three trans-identified males were on the winner's podium at a race in Washington last week, marking the first time men won first, second, and third place in a women's race. So here we go, people. This is it. The moment we've been waiting for when uh, women's sports is completely taken over by biological men, trans women, whatever they are. Cause they're, they're saying trans-identified males. So, like, there's a whole way to describe it. Whatever, they don't need a label. They're transformers. They're alts. They're in the process of their fantasy. Anyway, uh, New Hampshire Governor Sue Nunu signs bill banning transgender girls from girls' sports. Congratulations, New Hampshire. Well done. 
So grades five to 12, uh, you must play uh, and align with your gender identity. Not anymore. You're banned. You must play on your biological sport. All right, so Elon, um, I mean, a lot of people aren't aware of this, but he has like 10 kids, and one of them turns out uh, to be of the ulterior lifestyle. Let's hear what he has to say about it. It happened to one of my, my older boys, um, uh, where I was... Um, I was essentially tricked into uh, signing documents uh, for one of my older boys, Xavier. Uh, this was before I had really any understanding of what was going on. And we had COVID going on, and so uh, there was a lot of confusion. Um, and um, you know, I was told, oh, he, you know. Xavier might commit suicide if, if he did. That was a that was a lie right from the outset. Incredibly evil, and I agree with you that the people that have been promoting this should go to prison. That's so I was I was right. tricked into doing this, um, and uh, you know, it wasn't explained to me that puberty blockers are actually just sterilization drugs. Um, so um, anyway, uh, and so. I lost my son, essentially. Uh, so, you know, they uh, they call it dead naming for a reason. Yeah, I... All right, I'm, so they, the reason it's called dead naming is because uh, your son is dead. So my son Xavier is dead, killed by the woke wine virus. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I can't imagine what that would be like. Devastating. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, and there's lots okay. of people in that situation now. Right. It's not pretty, and lots of demolished kids. Yes. Yeah, so, well, that's a good that's a good reason to be the final straw. All right, so let's. So I vowed to destroy the mind, the woke mind virus after that. Look at his eyes. He is dead serious. Like this is his next mission. Mission one was PayPal. Boom, locked it in. Mission two. Tesla, Mission 3, The Boring Company, Mission 4, SpaceX, Mission 5, Destroy the Woke Mind Virus. And he's been successful in all his missions thus far, so watch out for Elon taking on uh, the Woke Mind Virus. He's not pleased. He lost his son. Well, you know, there's two sides to every story. We know that. Well, guess what? His son, his former son, his dead son, currently now going by uh, Vivian... Well, let's see what she has to say. This is a quote from her. I think he was under the assumption that I was going to say... I wasn't going to say anything, and I would just let this go unchallenged. Wilson said in a phone interview, which I'm not going to do, because if you're going to lie about me, like blatantly to an audience of millions, I'm not just going to let that slide. He was cold. He was very quick to anger. He is uncaring and narcissistic. Okay. I was in fourth grade. We went on this road trip... And I didn't know it was actually just an advertisement for one of the cars. I don't remember which one. And he was constantly yelling at me viciously because my voice was too high. It was cruel. All right, she's just naming off some things there. I no longer live with or wish to be related to my biological father in any way, shape, or form. But you want that paycheck, I bet, that inheritance. I would like to emphasize one thing. I am an adult. I'm 20 years old. I'm not a child. My life should be defined by my own choices. Absolutely. I lost my son. Yeah, we heard that. All right, so let's go and actually hear what the individual had to say. Okay, so Xavier goes by uh, Vivian now. And uh, let's just see what Vivian actually has to say. It is Vivian Jenna Wilson. I'm just going to come on here and say that I'm doing well. I'm doing fine, actually. Um, and I am formulating a response and whatnot it's being worked on it's being worked on just hold your goddamn horses for five more seconds okay i promise it's getting worked on all right well there you have it how it started whatever all right so uh let's see here this is vivalanus Vivian Wilson as she goes. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I need to debunk, which I will get to, don't worry, but I want to start with what I find the funniest, which is the notorious, slightly autistic tweet. This is going to be a bit, so just bear with me. So Elon tweeted, um, 
Xavier, dead name, was born gay and slightly autistic, two attributes that contribute to gender dysphoria. That's what Elon believes. I knew that from when he was about four years old and he would pick out clothes for me to wear like a jacket and tell me it was fabulous, as well as his love of musicals and theater. But he was not a girl. He was gay, he says. All right, this is entirely fake. Like, literally none of this ever happened, ever. I don't even know where he got this from. My best guess is that he went to the Milo Yiannopoulos School of Gay Stereotypes, just picked some at random, and said, eh, good enough, in a last-ditch attempt to garner sympathy points when he is so obviously in the wrong, even in his own story. Yeah, listen, you were four years old, I highly doubt you remember anything, and he's an adult, and he probably noticed the behavior of being like, huh, my son is uh, doing feminine things. I would have noticed, you know? I noticed my daughter doing female things. Anyway, I did not have a love of musicals and theater when I was four because, you know, I was four. I did not know what these things were. My earliest real experience with musicals was when my twin brother had a Hamilton phase. I, listen, Elon's probably talking about Frozen Disney musicals, okay? Not playwrights. I never picked out jackets for him to wear and most certainly not calling them fabulous because literally what the f I did not use the word fabulous when I was four because once again I would like to reiterate I was four and you have no memory of it obviously. They're, like this is so obvious I don't even think it warrants explanation but apparently people believe this nonsense so I'm here. Yeah well listen I trust Elon over you as trying to remember you as a four-year-old because I remember nothing of my four the year of existence absolutely nothing this entire thing is completely made up and there's a reason for this he doesn't know what it was like as a child because he's quite simply wasn't there maybe i mean that's typical like that's the thing elon literally is uh the representative microcosm of all american parents that are too busy to realize what's going on with their kids elon's got like a hundred job titles he wears that many hats all right anything else uh as for if i'm not a woman sure of jan whatever you say i'm legally recognized as a woman in the state of california i don't concern myself with the opinions of those who are below me wow ego who's a narcissist and so what i think this is i literally this is vivian projecting onto her father everything that she feels internally she is saying that her father is doing to her that's what i think Anyway, she's on threads. Good for her. Him. Whatever. All right, well, guess what? We're scared to go out at night alone, and short skirts mean unwanted sexual attention. Parisian women reveal safety fears after a gang rape of Australian tourists and say sex attack is catastrophic to France's image days before the Olympics. Absolutely. And uh, what happened to the Australian tourist? She was raped by five African men. Okay. She showed up at like a kebab shop and was crying and like, you know, obviously disoriented, distraught. And yeah, so guess what? You know, what does short skirts invite? Well, if we think about it in an animal instinctual way, it invites sexual attraction. You know what I mean? Like we're talking about that's what it does. Like if you're what attracts a man to a woman or a human to another human, it's aesthetically a pleasing curves, round things like you know that's why the buttocks is round and breasts are round and curves are something men are typically attracted to well if you show your skin then it opens up a man's imagination okay some men don't even like naked women they would prefer them in lingerie why because it's a little mysterious it offers something to them that uh there's like a thrill of the hunt type of instinctual thing and guess what we are animals guess what uh, yeah humans are animals so when you are uh, presenting things like that to an animal, some animals are able to control themselves. Some animals are not. Okay? And that's all it is. And humans are conditioned. So if a human didn't get proper conditioning uh, to the law and to what is right and wrong, then they'll go by their instinct. And if they never made mistakes and got punished, then they don't have a conscience. So they literally have no problem raping people. And why aren't the Africans coming out and saying, hey, listen, like we're denouncing this behavior because they don't see anything wrong with it. And a lot of these Muslims that are performing these rapes and things like that against the uh, counterculture is because they see them as less than them, similar to what uh, Vivian had said, people below them. Yeah, great job, people. 
All right, what do we got? New York City stores struggle to stay afloat with migrant thieves shoplifting up to six times a week, barely getting by. Yeah. So what's New York doing about it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Soren's Chris uh, Siako uh, said he will be left with no choice but to cancel his lease unless something unchanges, and that's going to be devastating. So there's a big lineup of migrants just hanging around. What are they doing? Fighting each other. There's migrant wars going on in the shelters. Heads up. All right, well, uh, what's going on in Washington? U.S. Capitol Police can be seen already having donned their gas masks near the Capitol building in Washington as pepper spray is deployed against a group of pro-Hamas supporters. Yeah, they were in the Capitol. We had a look at that there on the a previous episode on Monday. Or was it Wednesday, sorry. Well, let's go ahead and have a look. Just hosing them down with pepper spray. Yeah, make sure that mask is on tight, homie. Oh. Yeah, so that could have been a beanbag gun or something. Something got fired off there. All right, so uh, there it is. The protesters are being bossed in. What? Let's have a look. There's the Capitol right over there. And just bosses of people with their Hamas gear and their uh, kafafas or whatever they're called and their signs. Just ready. Here comes another one. And guess what? Apparently cell phones were tracked and they came uh, directly from the Kamala... Harris, uh, whatever it was. And one other thing, hmm, first, fo first photo is a hate crime, and the second is free speech. Because that's what they were doing. They literally took down the flags at the Capitol and burned them. And uh, they might have put up some uh, pro-Palestinian flags as well. And then some real patriotic Republicans went and took those down and did the Pledge of Allegiance. Well done. So this is uh, your two-state, uh, two-tiered state system we have here, right? Like... The guy on the left in his truck doing a burnout on a painted asphalt is going to go to jail for destroying something. And these people are burning the flag, which actually is against the law, but it's free speech. Right? All right, what else do we got? Top Dems threaten to forcibly remove Biden. Yeah, we talked about that. So, what happened? They were talking about the debate being a little bit early this year, and well, why? A lot of people knew Biden was faltering in the polls. He wasn't looking good, so they set him up. They said, let's put him in the debate. We'll have it late at night, right? We'll give him everything else he wants, but we'll put him late at night because we know that he's uh, that doesn't do well in the evenings. And then, boom, Trump just absolutely destroyed him in the debate. And then everyone was like, oh, my God, he's gone. This is bad. So um, did they threaten him? That's the question. Will we ever find out? Well, conservative group asks Speaker Johnson to investigate whether Dems threatened Biden with the 25th Amendment. Did they go up to him and say, listen, if you don't do this, we're going to wash you out? It's possible. But we'll find out in the future. We'll keep you posted. And just one more thing on that old uh, Trump assassination. Uh, it looks like four or five shots from the water tower, three from the tree targeting the north roof counter snipers, five from rooftop sniper crooks, and shots taken from below him, twin windows with silencers. So this guy here uh, has been analyzing all the information, John Cullen. Of course, there's community notes all over this. So what he believes happened was something along this, okay? Let's go ahead and make it large for you people. The little sig tigs, go ahead and have a look. Boom. All right, so you got the uh, second shot, possibly hit the hydraulics. Right? They're talking about two shots from the uh, the water tower. And so I don't even know what's going on with this. Like, this looks wild. But it's just an alternative theory to what possibly occurred, okay? 
Uh, update, after many days of analyzing the audio, video, and photographic evidence of the attempted assassination of President Trump, I cannot currently find any evidence whatsoever to support the notion that crooks fired any shots at all. There's overwhelming evidence, however, in support of the idea that he was a patsy. The rifle was found seven plus feet away from his body. How did it get there if he was shot dead? Dead men don't move rifles around. Maybe the police kicked it away from him, like when they got up there. They often do stuff like that. Um... It's clear the rifle was not in his hands when he was shot. No brass locations were apparently marked on the roof by FBI or anyone else. That's interesting. And there are no brass casings present in the police body cam footage taken from the roof shortly after the shooting. Thus, we have zero evidence of any spent brass on the roof at all. The crime scene behavior and protocols by SS and LEOs is absolutely atrocious as if they didn't even consider it a real crime scene at all. The sniper named Greg in the second floor office of an adjacent building had a clear open view of crooks on the roof, yet did nothing to stop him. Even after photographing him, the TMZ video showing crooks at the very moment the first three rounds are fired shows no recoil, no muzzle flash, and no brass ejecting from the right side of the rifle. How did crooks fire a rifle with no recoil? The 1X optic or iron sights on the rifle also would have made it extremely difficult for crooks to make a headshot with any sort of accuracy without magnification. Furthermore, how did crooks manufacture explosive devices that were told found in his car? Where would he have acquired such technical expertise to work with explosives without blowing himself up? Why was he allowed to fly a drone over the speaking location several hours before the event? He was allowed to do that the day of the event. Why was he filmed walking around the grounds with no concern at all, almost as if he had believed he was there with permission? Training mission narrative? How did he know this particular roof would not be covered by Secret Service? Who told him the roof was able was available to him. What seems to be emerging in my view is that Crooks believed he was on a training mission working with law enforcement to determine vulnerabilities, and he was playing along as they told him things like, here, take this rifle and climb onto the roof and tell us what you see. He did as he was told, put himself in a position, and then potentially somebody else took all eight shots after which Crooks was killed to wrap up the cover story, although not yet provable and perhaps never provable. This is emerging as a more likely explanation that fits the available data we have so far. It's subject to change of course if new data points emerge so i reserve the right to update or alter the analysis based on new data keep your thinking caps on keep crowdsourcing this investigation the fb lie is now engaged in an active cover-up yeah so take that with a grain of salt whatever you want um fbi director cast out on trump being struck by a bullet during assassination attempt yeah he's like maybe it wasn't a bullet maybe it was a shrapnel and then he came out and also uh, stated that this is Chris Ray, the director, said that eight spent rounds were recovered from the rooftop of the building, which the gunman opened fire. So he's saying all eight shots were definitely fired from the rooftop. And we have the other gentleman there um, who isn't analyzed, did his own analysis, and he says the opposite. Uh, Biden shown here with a large bruise on his chin. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. Just on the left side of his face, the right side of your screen. How did he get it? Well, a lot of people are saying he fell down when he was in Las Vegas. Okay, you saw the White House speech. Not a statement in front of humans. No questions taken. Skin tone more orange. Facial skin tone did not match hands, which were more brown. Something super weird. I don't even understand vis-a-vis -vis the neck. Where did 80% of his facial lines go? Maybe President Biden rebounded in five days from mortal illness, changed color, and got a lot of Botox. But we're living in a very weird world uh, with very new technologies, and we should ask questions. Absolutely. And people were noting that when he walked out of the White House uh, briefing there from that, he was like a couple inches taller than normal, whatever. New StatsCan data shows that crime is surging under the Trudeau government. No way to deny it anymore. Homicides are up 28%. Sexual assaults, 74%. Auto theft, 45% extortion 357 percent unbelievable can you even imagine that so conservatives will bring home safe streets by repealing bill c75 and c5 any liberal soft on crime approach yeah uh jail not bail way to go pierre let's see it let's see it happen because this is absolutely disgusting all right, what else? Trudeau government, which is responsible for forest fire management in Jasper National Park. That's right, it's a national park. Uh, was warned about the dangers for years. They allowed the buildup of dead trees after the pine beetle decimated large parts of the forest. They weren't doing any controlled burns. And guess what? 
all that dry wood there. Just come on, lay it off. Way to go, Trudeau. Canadian Skinny Dipping Club lets kids in for free and says erections are natural. So yeah, another reason to stay clear of Canada until the Conservatives are in in 2025, unless Jagmeet like lets them drop and uh, goes ahead and stops cradling Justins, you know. Because right now, uh, the greatest name for Jagmeet Singh is Mr. Sans Testicles, okay? Anyway, uh, creeped out, you should be, and yet this is entirely true according to screen grabs of the GTA Swim Clubs event ads posted by Libs of TikTok. The naked swimming groups are open to all ages, with participants under the age of 18 getting in for free. In fact, the image accompanying the club includes a cartoon depiction of a man and a woman along with an adolescent girl and a toddler boy, all in the nude with their genitals on full display. It's enough, okay? Absolutely enough. And uh, paying money to murder Russian luxury yachts offering pirate hunting cruises. What, Tiger? This is from 2009, and it's been debunked, okay? Can you shoot pirates on a luxury cruise ship along the Somali coast? Of course not. Snope says that's absolutely stupid. The United Nations have come out and said that's illegal. You can't do that. Mm, it's just something people are talking about. Well, guess what? Maybe it is true. Just go ahead and have a look at this. Wealthy Russian people are hiring luxury yachts. <laughs> yacht. Yachts, which are heavily armed to sail near Somalia on pirate hunting expeditions. Their goal is to hopefully attract pirates to approach them so that they can open fire with grenade launchers and automatic weapons. This is the closest thing to the purge currently available. And of course, a uh, context is being added that this story is, of course, it's fake. It was proven wrong because someone said it's incorrect. No one's doing that at all. Well, let's just have a look. ...that Russian luxury cruise ships are offering pirate hunting cruises to customers. In these cruises, instead of being victims of pirates, people pay around $5,700 per day to sail near Somalia on heavily armed private yachts. They hope to attract the attention of real pirates. When the pirates approach, the armed passengers on these yachts open fire with weapons like grenade launchers, machine guns, and rocket launchers. The yachts also come with bodyguards who are said to be a group of former Special Forces soldiers. For an extra $20 per day, passengers can even use an AK-47 with 100 rounds of ammunition. Yeah, so 2009, I'm saying, yeah, that probably was fake. 2024, psh, that's probably 100% fact. All right, people, there it is. Thank you for tuning in. A little bit of a long show today, but so much to cover. TGIF, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your family, enjoy your life, and speak your mind. And if you find out you're wrong, admit it. Own up. Accountability is the most important thing on earth. Say we talk about signing out.